Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to an interview on the channel. And today, guys, we are going to be continuing our AFL 2022 three-game match reviews. Now, in today's video, we have got all the eight, all the three AFL games, mainly regarding Anzac Day, the two the two Anzac Day games, and the one Anzac Day Eve game. We'll be able to show the latter as well. For the first time in this video, now I may still sound not 100%, but I will tell you I'm feeling a lot better. So we'll definitely be ready to go for round reviews and previews as well. So that's exciting. Um, in today's video, we've got Richmond versus Melbourne, uh, the truthful Anzac Eve game. Of course, uh, Hawthorne versus Sydney, uh, the Anzac, an, an Anzac Day game. But the real deal, the real Anzac Day game, the signature Anzac Day game. Essendon versus Collingwood. So in today's video, we're going to be going over everything from these games, reviewing them all. So let's go ahead, get right into things, starting off with Melbourne versus Richmond. So this game was quite the interesting contest here at the MCG, Richmond versus Melbourne. Richmond 8-6, 54. Melbourne 9-22. 22 76. Now, 22 behind it. Let's just talk about this real quick. 9-22 is not a score that you'll regularly see from the Demons. Now, yes, they may not be the most accurate team in the competition right now, but they get the job done on, on multiple occasions. That They're 6-0 they're, uh, for that reason. They get a good score on the board. They should have won this game by probably close to what would it be, 70 or 80 probably. If they had have kicked accurately, they could have won by 60, 70, 80, probably 60 to 70 if they had kicked accurate. So, 9-22, obviously something to work on, and they get a score of 76. So, that's obviously not great, 22 behinds. You don't really want to be getting that many behinds. It did give off a huge percentage boost opportunity as well, but they they did score. Um, they At least they were scoring. They, were still, they still put on enough score to win the game. The Tigers, they had the game for the first term, just two demon goals late. Um... Really bought them the lead at quarter time. Half time, the Tigers, they were in front, but the Ds, they had an okay second term, but the, the Tigers, they had a better second term. A little staircase there really gave them a good opportunity. Um, and then the, the Demons, that third quarter was just the quarter where they just said goodbye to the Tigers, and then final term was, was uh, quite even. The Demons, the Dockers... Um, have been just two clubs that I would recognise, and there's definitely more, but the Demons and the Dockers especially, are teams that just have a breakout tw a breakout quarter, and that's where they say bye-bye to their oppositions and go off and win the game from there. Demons, that's where their lays, that's where theirs is, and, and the Dockers, they've done it so many times as well. They did it against Carlton, GWS, and Fremantle. Uh, it's not Fremantle, so they did it against the, the Blues, the Giants and the Dons, <laughs> oh boy, and the Demons, they can they can really pile on the score as well. This obviously not their prettiest, but that third term still is where they ran away with it. 41 dispose for Oliver, 3 goals for Wiedemann, 131 fantasy for Vloston, and 6 tugs for uh, Harms, Castagna, and Prestia. Um, good game though for the Demons, that they go 6-0. No. Um, clearly the best team in the competition. 129 fantasy for Oliver, 127 for Short, 119 for Gorn, 115 for Langdon, for Langdon, 111 for Nankervis, 108 for Broad, and 104 for Prestia. Yeah, Langdon, he he's amazing on the wing as well. Two goals for Fritch, Rewell, and Lynch. Um, all, all stepping in. Disposals, 41 for Oliver. He definitely topped it by a long way. 30 for Vloston and Short and Langdon. 27 for Prestia and Neil Bullen getting plenty of the ball um, in in the forward half, Marks, 12 for Vlostone, Gibkiss, again, he's fantastic, uh, 10 for Broad, 9 for Short, Tackles, um, 6 for Castania Prestia and Harms, 5 for Luke Dunstan, the former Saint, uh, former Saint. Uh, 30 hitouts for Gorn, 24 for Nankervis, 9 for Jackson, 2 for Bolter, 1 for Rebo, Gorn and Jackson, such a great rock combo, we'll just go through a couple of the team stats, uh, there you go, um, the Demons, they went inside 50 way more, of course, producing way more scoring shots. Obviously, uh, if you see the goal behind ratio, it, it's not looking great. But the Demons, just the way they can set up behind the ball as well is really important. 
uh, they get their real zone going and really this is a brick wall you can't get through and there was a real there was real stages there where the Tigers just couldn't do anything it was just living in the day's half uh, so a bigger win probably should have been presented here but look, look at that 10 misses and then six two posters three rush three rush one touched um, but yeah again the Demons they could have won this game by more but they still take the four points now, this game, not sure if you guys followed this game live or watched it live, but this game was really, really, really weird. In fact, this this was a really weird game of footy. Hawthorne, 10 68 were defeated by the Swans, 16-13, 109. And just by saying those scores, you guys are like, oh, yeah, Swans probably came out and dominated. And no, the Hawks, they came out and dominated. They got the first five goals of the game. So this is saying, like, they have a 32-point lead to, to naught. Um, just like what West Coast were last week against the Swans, um... But yeah, the uh, the Hawks have a 32-point lead and they choke it and the Swans win by 41. Now, obviously, this is in the first quarter and a game is never over until it's over in football. Uh, the Swans, they kicked nine last quarter goals to run away with it um, and to win by 41. You can see that the Hawks they had control for the first three quarters, but it was that first quarter that they had control in. Uh, the second term was not their prettiest, um, but again, they did dom they did uh, win the second term. The third term, they did let the Swans back into the game, but the final term, something just happened for the Hawks. Something just didn't go right, and all that hard work was undone, and the Swans come back. They kicked nine last quarter goals, eight in a row. And that seals the deal. And they walk away winners by 41. I said that I wouldn't be surprised if the Hawks won. And the Swans, though, they just came out charging. And they are such a good team. They, pro I, I feel like they make top four this year. I feel like the power with the start they've had probably does makes it tough for top four. Um, they could still definitely get there, the power. I'm not saying that they can't, but, yeah, it would make it tougher. Then you got, like, yeah, again, I'll probably have to make a video on going over top four and all that. But, again, I feel like Sydney, they're real contenders. And this performance showed a nice comeback from behind win. And all that effort in the last quarter. Fantastic stuff by the Swans. Um, and it was Callum Mills that did so much work. 37 disposed, 162A for fantasy. Uh, 10 tackles for Amira, 3 goals for Buddy Franklin, Ben Ronk, Jacob Kaczynski. Uh, There's plenty of players getting in as well. Uh, we'll start with Hideous, 34 for Laddams, 23 for Lynch, 6 for McLean, um, 4 for Nash. We have a look at A for Fantasy, 109 for Mitchell, no one else got close. 108 for Warner, 107 for Laddams, 100 for Sicily, 95 for McInerney. We'll have a look at goals behinds, 2 goals for Bruce and Warner, uh, disposals. 37 for Mills, and then 29 for Parker, 26 for Mitchell, 24 for Warner. And Newcomb, 23 He's really good as well. We'll go to the marks. 11 for Sicily and Mills. 9 for McGuinness. 8 for Frost and McInerney. Go to the tackles. 7 for Mitchell. 6 for Newcomb. And Robot and Hayward. And then we've already done hit outs. So we'll go back. We'll have a look at some team stats. But yeah, the Swans, they are a really, really, really good team. Definitely in the top four. Um, quality. And this is a real top four performance. This is a real important performance for the Swans. And they are now really stating that, yes, it may be a win away from home. Yes, they may come from behind to win. And yes, they win. And yes, they win by a lot as well. Um, so they did a fantastic job. Showing they can pile on the score. Like, what would have that been? They would have... They, Hawthorne got 6 to 7-11. That will take you to um, 42 at, at the 11. That takes you to 53. That is a massive turnaround. 53, that's like 50, that's 56 point turnaround in the final term. 6 to 56. The Swans, that's massive. That is a mass, that is a massive score turnaround. Um, look, they, they were just the better team in this game here, the Swans, but wow, they got a really good list, the Swans. They are going really well. And the Hawks, wow, they did pretend, I mean, you can't really call it a trope because it was in the first term, but. Yeah, the Swans, they are such a good team just for that reason. Now, I know that we may be getting late into the video. I feel like this is going to be a long one. Uh, but, again, the opening ceremony for this game was a fantastic one. Um, of course, the Anzac Day ceremony for this game is the biggest. It is one of the best games to look forward to for the entire year. Definitely one of the best in the home and away season as well. Essendon 12, 10, 82 were defeated by Collingwood 15-3. They were extremely accurate, 93 at the MCG. Later, uh, 
Well, just earlier today, actually, um, I'm actually recording this not too long after this game ends. Only about half an hour or so after this game ends. So, uh, Jack Ginevan with the five goals, he wins the um, the medal. So you can see here with the worm, it was a really up and down contest. Um, you can see the Pies had had the first quarter uh, in in their way. Second quarter was also Pies. Third term was probably probably Bombers. Um. Even though the Pies are in front, the Pies did lead at every break. But, again, the Bombers, they just were better in that third term. The final term, the Bombers got a little bit of a lead. But then the Pies, they were just too strong. And the Pies are looking good this year as well, I feel. The Pies are a strong team. They've they've given it up. They've really competed against teams like uh, Brisbane and Geelong. Um, they've won against Adelaide and St Kilda. Two very good wins. Um, and then... And then... Um, few other performances in there as well uh definitely not great against west coast but this game was fantastic uh from collingwood they were fantastic um they did everything they needed to they needed to get a win in this game they got gold coast next week here at the mcg so they should be able to play well against them um but yeah they were just fantastic the pies the bombers they had plenty of stars back parish was definitely one of their best but it was a really even contest um but yeah just the Pies, they were just a better team in the end. Uh, 44 disposed for Darcy Parrish. He had 30 at half time. Could have definitely tracked down 60. Um, Jack Inver with the five goals, best on ground. Um, although, again, you could arguably say, was it Parrish? Was it Ginevan? Yeah, that one could really be up for debate. 115 AFL Fantasy for Zach Merritt. Back into the team, of course, with Jake Stringer for the Bombers. Two very handy ins. Got him nice and close. So the Pies. Six tackles for Braden Maynard and Jack Crisp. Not sure if you saw, but his beautiful running goal through the middle. I watched pretty much all this contest. Well, I did actually watch the whole thing. It was fantastic. It's always nice to watch, sit down and watch a little bit of Anzac Day footy. Uh, 114 fantasy for Parrish. 108 for McGrath. 105 for, Grun for Grundy. Where is Ginevan on this list? He got the 79 fantasy. Uh, goals behind, yeah, five straight for Ginnivan, four for Waterman and Mike. And then three goals for Stringer on his return, two goals for Guelphie and Perkins. Disposals, 44 for Parrish, 36 for Merritt, 31 for McGrath. Those are some big numbers. And then 27 for Degore, 26 for Steele, 25 for Pendlebury, 24 for Crisp, 23 for Dacos and Noble. Again, some pretty big numbers there. That was Nick Dacos um, as well. Have a look at the marks. 13 for Howe. And, of course, had to be a screamer in there as well. Uh, not sure whether it was a massive screamer, but, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a screamer, you could say. Um, and then six tackles for uh, Maynard, five for Quainor and Crisp. Hit outs, we'll have a look at that. 33 for uh, Grundy, 27 for Draper, five for Wright, four for Baldwin, um, and three for Darcy Cameron. But, again, the Pies, they are, they are looking pretty good this year, actually. I feel like... Uh, definitely better than what they were last year. Um, and the Bombers, they're not in a great place. But, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see with the Bombers. And the Pies also interesting to see as well. But here's just some stats. Um, the Pies, they led majority of this contest. But the Bombers, they were always there, always ready to attack. They were always never really more than a goal and a half behind. Um, and the Pies end up winning this one by 11. So a fantastic round of footy. The Saints defeat the Giants. The Crows get over the Dogs in a massive upset. The Power get their first win of the year over the Eagles. The Dockers take control over the Blues in another blitz of a third term and a final term as well. North Melbourne uh, gets smashed by the Cats. Uh, Brisbane take care of the Suns. The Demons overcome a hard challenge with the Tigers. Swans surge. The Swans come from behind in an epic come from behind win to snare it over the Hawks after they fast start. And the Pies claim Anzac Day 2022 with a nice, comfortable little win over the Bombers going to the ladder. Here's what we have. Melbourne are 6 and 0. Fremantle are 5 and 1 along with Brisbane and Sydney. Sydney and Brisbane will actually clash in round number 7 at the SCG. Good game there. And St Kilda also 5 and 1. Four and two, we've got Geelong and Carlton. Collingwood, Hawthorne and Adelaide are all three and three. And then uh, for two and four, we've got the Dogs, the Tigers and the Suns. And then every team has gotten away with a win. The Power are one and five, along with the Giants and the Bombers and the Eagles and the Roos, low on percentage as well. So that is the ladder. That's going to wrap up 
another brilliant, brilliant weekend of footy. I'm going to say, let's take a look at what round number seven has in store for us. West Coast versus Richmond on Friday night at Optus. Um, and then Geelong versus Fremantle team be a big game for the Dockers, of course, and the Cats. The Crows host the Giants at the Adelaide Oval before the Demons host the Hawks out of the MCG. So tonight we've got the Saints and the Power, because Ailey's the Power, they could pull off two wins in a row if they beat the Saints, but they're five and one. And the Blues take on the... The Blues take on the Roos in what is a massive game for the Blues. I just feel like they haven't been up to scratch lately, so this is a really big contest. Can they steady the ship? Or will they come crashing back down? And the Roos, will they get another big win? The Pies take on the Suns on the Sunday afternoon at the MCG before the Bombers go head-to-head with the Dogs at Marvel. And then a big clash to end off the rounds. Sydney and Brisbane at the SCG. Exciting, exciting round of footy. And then round eight, there's some more brilliant action as well. Uh, so we've got a really big next couple of rounds. I'm not going to go over round eight contest just yet, as I see a little while away. But what a fantastic round of footy this one was. Round seven has some brilliant, um, some brilliant treats in store. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit the bell. See you guys in another video on the channel. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Inspire everyone, flaming footy out.